Welcome to Electron Line. Here's our next example, a little bit more complicated, for which we're going to apply the mesh analysis by inspection. Now, we're not going to actually work it out completely to the end, but we're going to set it up. Again, that's the key to this method, is how quickly you can set up the equations. Solving the equations simply means you're going to solve the matrices or the determinant method, use the determinant to solve the matrices equations. Now, let's go ahead and start with first assigning the mesh currents to each of the meshes. There's three meshes now, one, two, three. So I need a red pen. Where did my red pen go? Oh, I'm holding my red pen. All right, there we go. Let's call this uh, I1. Let's call this here I2. And let's call this here I3. And again, I like the clockwise direction, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. We have three mesh currents, which means we're going to have a three by three matrix. Next, we're going to find the resistances for those matrix elements. We end up with a resistance matrix here. This is going to be a three by three matrix. We multiply that times the three unknowns of the three unknown currents, I1, I2, and I3, and that is going to be equal to the sum of the voltages as we go around each mesh, and we'll find those in just a moment. First, we need to find the diagonal elements. That means we need to find R11, R22 and R33. This is simply the sum of all the resistances around each mesh. Going around the first one, we see 4 plus 2, which is equal to 6. Going around the second one, we see 2 plus 8, which is equal to 10. And the third one, it's 4 plus 6 plus 8, that's equal to 18. So those are the three diagonal values of our matrix or our resistance matrix 6 and 18. 10. Now here we need the matrix shared by one and two. Here we need the matrix shared by one and three, one and two, and one and three. So we get those elements, R between one and two, R between one and three, and R between two and three. Because those are equal to R between two and one, and R between three and two. Notice this gives us six elements, but there's a pair of those. There's three pairs, I should say. And then we have those three. That's a total of nine elements. Here we find the value shared between 1 and 2. Between these two we have 2 ohms shared, so we write a negative 2. We always write the negative of the total value of, of resistance shared. If there was a second resistor there, we'd have to add them together, but put a negative in front of that. Between 1 and 3, uh, 1 and 3, we're sharing a 4 ohm resistor. That's equal to a negative 4, always put a negative in front. And between 2 and 3, we're sharing an 8 ohm resistor. That's minus 8. So now we have to place those in the right location. So this is 1 and 2 and 1 and 3. 1 and 2 is a minus 2, 1 and 3 is a minus 4, 2 and 1 is a minus 2, and 2 and 1 is a minus 4. Notice that it's a mirror image across the diagonal, and then for these two elements we put in a minus 8 and a minus 8. This gives us our resistance matrix of all the meshes the unknown currents, and now we have to add up the voltages as we travel around each mesh in the same direction as the current. Notice when we travel around the first mesh, we have a 16 volt rise, no drops, so plus 16 volts. Around the second mesh, notice we're going in the opposite direction as the voltage source from the positive to negative, that's minus 40. And finally for the third one, there's no voltage sources there, so it gives us a zero. Now the only thing left to do is to go ahead and solve for that. What we would do is we would solve for the determinant here, then we plug in the voltages for the first column, find the value for that matrix, plug in the voltages for the second column, find that matrix, plug in the voltages for the third column, find that matrix, and then divide each of the three matrices by the determinant to find the current for I1, I2, and I3. We've shown you some examples in previous videos on how to do that, so in the, in the interest of time, if you need to know again how to do that, go back to the other examples, but here we simply want to show you how to set up very quickly the three equations and three unknowns using the mesh analysis by inspection method. And in the next several videos, we'll even put more complicated circuits on, and you can see how quickly we can come up with the equations and to solve for the unknowns, even if the circuit is quite complicated. So stay tuned for those examples as well.